suddenly, the scene changed. And I saw courtrooms. And I saw judges with gavels pounding, just pounding, pounding at the bench. I saw pastors in chains. I had shackles on myself. I see people in the jury seats in, in the witness stand and they're crying. And the judges are saying, you can no longer preach this message. You can no longer declare that this type of lifestyle is sin. You cannot say anything bad about this kind of lifestyle. You cannot say anything bad about this situation. You cannot address these things from the pulpit ever again. You cannot say this. You cannot say that. You cannot say that Jesus is the only way. That's one specific thing I remember. You cannot say that abortion is a sin. That I remember as well. You cannot deal with alternative lifestyles and call them uh, awful, terrible things. You can't say that these things violate Scripture. You can no longer preach from Scripture was one obvious thing that was stated and said. And, 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 and most of us that were in there were saying, we can't do that. We can't do that. And the gavel comes down in anger. And they're mad, they're mad, they're mad. Then I saw churches surrounded by mobs of people. People that were yelling to shut it down, even burn it down. I saw people who were being so hateful towards the church. I saw people harassing believers who were going into church services. I saw people waiting outside after church to harass people who were coming from church to go home. I saw just hateful attitudes. But the thing that stood out in my mind, most of the people in those crowds were the people who'd been sitting in those chairs and those pews and were not listening to begin with. And in that moment, it struck me, even in the dream, that some of the biggest persecution the church is going to face coming very, very soon, and probably I believe we've already started, some of the biggest persecution will come from those who sat in our churches Never accepted the word of God as the word of God. Raised in it all their lives and now want to walk away because they do not like the preaching of the word of God that says this is sin, sin, this is wrong. You cannot walk in this and still be a believer. It was it was the group of people that it was it was the sons and daughters and grandchildren of people who've been raised in, they've been raised in church all their lives. But they've said, we've had it. There's nothing in this for me. This gospel has no power, has no authority. It says, I can't have this. I can't do that. I can't go where I want to go. I can't be who I want to be. I can't do what I want to do. And those were the people who were screaming. They were throwing rocks. They had baseball bats and guns in their hands. They were throwing threats at those of us who were coming out of the church. And the anger was led once again by those who had fallen away. And I do believe that people can fall away from the Lord. I believe in backsliding. Those were the people who were pushing back against everything they'd been taught. This was in America, and there was chaos and panic, and people were really in terror. And I had a lot of fear uh, just in a, as an observer. And what I saw was that there was a, a large, I'd call it civilian police force that had raised up. This was not the normal police force that we have on the streets today. This was a different group of soldiers or a police force. And it's seen that some of these were Americans, but not all of them. And what I could tell very clearly is they'd had an order given to them to round up all the Christians and all the people that believed in the Bible. The order was, the, the order was get every single one of them. Don't let a single one of them, you know, run away. But I saw a leader that was giving orders to a, a large group of these soldiers. And this was a black man. And his face, he looked just like Barack Obama and the same body type and everything. And he was like pointing with a finger and, and giving them stern orders. So the next thing I saw was there were these groups of Christians being put on to large trucks or they weren't trains. I'd describe it as it was like trucks 
from what I remember. And they were taken to these large warehouses is what I would describe it as, is like these large cement warehouses. And the next thing I saw, and this is the one time where I really heard a strong dialogue between people, is there was a group of Christians getting off this truck and a group of soldiers. And this Christian man was looking at the soldier and he was yelling at him and he was saying, you don't even believe in what you're doing. And he said, I have complete faith in what I'm doing and I'm ready right now to die for what I believe in. And he, and he looked at the soldier and he said, are you willing to die for what you're doing? Are you willing to die for what you believe in? And so the second dream, I was just sitting in bed watching TV at night and all of a sudden my program was interrupted by a presidential emergency alert. But instead of Obama coming through, it was a terrorist. And they were basically just warning us about being on our land and, you know, trying to scare us, I guess. And then the scary sound came back on, like, arr, arr, and then all of a sudden all the power just shut off. And I'm talking about an EMP attack. Like, the entire country just blacked out. And I woke up. <laughs> but last year, I had the second part of that dream it was basically the next morning everybody was freaking out um, without power we lose a lot of stuff we are very reliant on electricity for many things that we can't even imagine losing and I'm talking about access to our money access to gasoline um, access to each other you know no communication with an EMP attack because the towers aren't working I mean everything was just crazy so in that moment of desperation, everyone started getting knocks on their doors because how else are they going to address the plan of action, right? We can't contact anybody to find out when our power is coming back on. Um, two men were at my door. They were police. They were dressed in the, you know, the police state outfit, the SWAT looking things. One white man, one African American man. One of them started searching my apartment looking for weapons and electronics. So they were pretty much trying to take our <clears throat> defense and our communication away. And then the other man pulled me out and attached me by handcuffs to a string of people. And they led us to a vehicle. Next thing I know, I am in, I want to say FEMA camp. And I say this because I found pictures of this later. There were lots of cots. Uh, like small cots you would see in a prison, and it kind of looked like a mixture between a prison and a hospital. There were medical staff around. The nurses were dressed provocatively, like like a, you know, like the sexy Halloween costume. The nurses were also treating us like we were below them, like laughing at us and making fun of us, and um, we were also dressed in prison outfits, solid color, top and bottom, and we were allowed to be outside for like 15 minutes every day. But it wasn't like green grass, it was a slab of concrete with um, a fence and multiple cameras facing in at us. Another in the dream, military police, and I had, I knew it was a military police, right? They came knocking down my door, like breaking my door apart. And, um, they took me and everyone else out of our home and put us in these huge buses and i had knowledge that um they were taking us to some type of camps so i had a very short dream about the concentration camps and i heard god say bait you know you guys will be baited you know into the concentration camps but god just briefly said that we will be baited the way that it will happen is what bait means is like hey we got a whole bunch of um resources here we want to help you guys just come and you know check your temperature let's just say that you know hey we got food here you know we want to um make sure that you guys are okay you know hey come on over here to the camps because you know it, it's, it's way more safer you know over here and this is what happened i remember being in this 
almost like cafeteria building and just um, seeing like lots of people around and these other people that look like they were like authoritative, like maybe like doctors or nurses, but they had like these clipboards. And I remember my family was around me, but my kids were not with me, but I could see my kids. And um, in my head, I thought um, like, like I just saw like I'm in a detention hall. Like I'm, 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 I was put here for a reason. And I don't know why. And immediately I was thinking, okay, they're going to try to probably force the mark on us. I don't even know why I was thinking that. But when I thought that, I could see like this lady open up this door. And I'm looking at my kids now. And this room was like, they're like promising like gifts and toys, you know, incentives. And the kids were like so excited. Not just my kids, but like multiple children. And the kids were so excited. They were like, you know, like, oh, come this way. Oh, we have like candy here. We have like toys here, you know. And then I kind of woke up. Basically, I was in a group of people. This was in the future. And we see the riots across the nations that are happening in the streets. It was similar to that where they pull out a hose and they spray people. And we were in a group and <clears throat> we were moving forward on a street. And instinctually, I knew they were sending people to an area where there would be poisonous gas. And these people did not know that, but I knew that because the Holy Spirit revealed it to me in the dream. And so there was a place where they wanted us to go left or go straight ahead. And inside of me, it was like, no, I'm not going there. And so I turned around with one person that was with me and I said, we have to get out of here. And so we turned and we went away from these people that had guns and everything, leading these people into <clears throat> this area where they would be ultimately disposed of. And we turned and went the opposite direction going against the grain, which is very prophetic. It was like no one could even see us going. It was like we were invisible. And then all of a sudden I knew that we needed to turn left and go into this room. So we went into this room. There was a big person there and I said, please help us. I believe that was an angel. And the angel said, come with me, led us through that room, which then opened up to another area where we went underneath this fence. And we were then in a secure place where they could not even get to us because we were outside of the limits. I believe this was like a concentration camp because we went through this wire on our uh, stomachs we crawled and got through this wire and the angel I believe it was an angel helped us and then it was as though there was a person with a car and she said to us get in the car so we got in the car which was sort of like a SUV <clears throat> we laid in the back and she said I'm gonna get you out of here and we drove she drove we laid in the back and then we were out of that entire area. Basically in this dream, I knew that I was in a sort of um, concentration camp and I was on top of the buildings and it looked like it was night out and I knew that I was trying to escape. So I was on the top of some roof and I wanted to jump over a fence and now I knew anyone and everyone that was in these concentration camps were being exiled from regular society because we were refusing something. In this case, it was most likely a shot or some sort of treatment that the government was forcing everyone to take. Anyone that wasn't taking it was being looked at as a threat and was put into these concentration camps. So I was trying to escape because I knew all of us were healthy. None of us were doing anything wrong. We were just simply standing up for what we believed and what we didn't want to do that was being forced upon us. And so I remember once I jump off the roof, I start running and I see like policemen start following me. 
They looked like they were special forces because they were dressed differently than police. But when they came up to me, they basically ended up pulling me down to the floor. And then um, I saw one of the officers take out this huge like syringe. And when he grabbed the syringe, uh, the other officer just grabbed my head and my arms down really, really tightly. And I just remember in my dream saying, Lord, anything that happens from here forward, that if I, re if I renounce you and I say things that are not of me, please do not hold that to me. I basically knew that I was going to spiritually be dead there. like, um, And I knew that, it, that whatever they were inserting in me wasn't going to kill me, but it was going to change um, my perception. But I'm telling you what I saw, because the biggest persecution that came, came from the people who had walked away from the church. And then I saw pulpits being chopped up with axes, the big old style wooden pulpit. I saw them being just chopped to pieces. I saw plexiglass pulpits being hammered, hammered. I saw Christians in chains, I saw them publicly ridiculed, and I saw them publicly assaulted because their ideas were old-fashioned and needed to go. And then I heard a cry that I've heard for six months, but there was something added to it. I heard, brace yourself and endure to the end. So the dream, I had the impression that I was in a concentration camp. And I was in this prison. I was in there with some guys I know from Florida, some of my white homeboys. And uh, it was just one girl in there. Now, you know, in a, in a prison, you know, they close you in a cell. But this was like uh, three, it was like four of us inside of one open like cell where it was like a day lockup center slash sale where you know it was like freedom in there and then you know we can't like you know we could go back go out into the like the little community prison area and stuff like that it kind of reminded me of like a fema camp but i dreamt the imagery was very vivid and i dreamt i was in a constant like a fema camp or i was held i was held hit prisoner i was being held prisoner i was going into this building that housed these prisoners but there were not a lot of prisoners there at the time it was mostly just they it was mostly me they walked me by myself i was in isolation i didn't see anyone else so what they would do is they'd walk the prisoner up without other prisoners around and keep you isolated so i guess i was one of the people that they really felt they had to isolate. So I was isolated in isolation, no one was talking to me, and I was being led upstairs in this building that looked like a former like institution, like a former junior high. It reminded me of my junior high a little bit. I hadn't done anything to deserve to be in present. I was in the right. I felt very um, right, like pure inside and that there was no reason for them to be holding me. I kept seeing barbed wire, and there was so much barbed wire. Uh, it was a dream concerning uh, concentration camps. So I found myself and my children and many other people in a concentration camp. It was tall, you know, tall roof, like a warehouse kind of place uh, with high gates. So we were all just in the middle, plenty, many, many people, different, different uh, nationals. We were there, my kids uh, were standing next to me. So time to time, they opened the gate and some people would just go out of the gate. They released some people to go out of the gate and I don't know why they released them. So they would, the gate would make ping, 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 ping with a buzzing sound, you know, like uh, the alarm sound. And then they would let people out, but there's a lot of military people surrounding each corners. And yeah, I mean, the place is tightly secured. There is no way anyone can come out of there. So in the winter, uh, this past winter, I had a winter, I had a dream that I had, I guess I got arrested and I went into a jail, but it, I went to a prison, but it wasn't like a regular prison. And it's so crazy how they have the FEMA camps out now that a lot of people know about. And you can actually Google about it. And 
I had, I was, when I was there, I was looking around. It did not look like a regular prison. A lot of people were online and all I kept on hearing was showers, showers, showers or whatever. And it was a long line and I guess they was just getting people into it or whatever. But I, it was, it was really strange. But all I remember is I seen my friend Asia and they said she's not leaving because she didn't cooperate. That's what I remember. And then the dream skipped to me leaving. And while I'm leaving out, all I remember is seeing people on a corner, just like everything was normal, like everything was fine. And all I remember saying was, repent, repent, repent. I said it three times, but out loud and with such, with such, uh, uh, just like, like warning, warning, repent, like Jesus is coming. And no, everybody was looking at me strange. And then I woke up. We were aware that cities throughout the country were changing. Large fences were being built around certain cities, and there were new boarding schools popping up around the country. The beginning of the dream just showed me and the boyfriend and the father inside our home, and I had this knowledge about the way things were changing. And then the dream changed. I had gone off to one of the boarding schools, and I quickly realized that the place wasn't what everyone thought it was. All of the people who were in management and teaching positions wore black uniforms, and there was one man who was in charge of the entire place. He was very handsome and charismatic, and the other people wanted to keep him happy, but I could sense that he was extremely evil. As a new arrival, I was dressed in sackcloth and thrown into a cage in a room. There were many cages in this room, and they were all connected, and there were people in all the cages who were also wearing sackcloth. The floor was a dirt floor, and the first thing I did after I was left in the cage was drop to my hands and knees, and I recited the entire Lord's Prayer. I don't recall ever being able to accurately recite something in a dream the way I did with this prayer. Some of the people in the other cages were warning me to be quiet, and I quickly found out why. I'd barely finished the prayer when a man in a black uniform charged back into the room, opened my cage door, and violently tackled me, shoving a needle into my arm and injecting me with something that caused me to pass out. I felt the needle go into my arm in a way that I've never felt anything else in a dream, and I cried out in pain before everything went black. I was a slave at this Walmart. So basically, I was basically enslaved in this Walmart. And so I had this crazy dream, very first dream I had about the FEMA camps. Um, it was a wooden camp, um, and I was there. There were martial law people everywhere. I remember them bringing tons and tons of these Americans inside this camp, and I was in the camp. Um, these people were shackled up, wearing these bluish gray shirts, walking in, and for some reason I was liked in the FEMA camp because I did everything they wanted me to. I just, I worked. They were, it, it was like they were slaving people. They were beating them to death and they were making them do work. Well, in my dream, I was going around and pretending to be like their little slave girl you know like I was doing everything they wanted me to I was helping them bring people in but I was doing it for a reason I was getting supplies and hiding them in my boots and my shirt and my pants so that I could escape and in my dream I guess I escaped like four or five times but every time I escaped I forgot something so the fourth time I went back I saw my brothers and it scared me in my dream really bad my own family was in this camp well I tried getting them out as, as much as I could and I finally when I escaped with them the martial law people caught us and they were about to beat us and I woke up. So everybody went into the, the buildings and as we went into the buildings I was reminded of like a, a World War II barrack style uh, setting because when I got in there it was you know it was, it was room enough. It was an open bay. And we got in there, and, and once we were in there and the doors closed, there was one guy who was not like part of our group. He was a, he was like representing the people that wanted us in the building. And he began to share with us things that he, the way he thought and different things and I could tell by how he was 
saying things, he was trying to get us to acknowledge his God. But he was doing it in such a way, it sounded like if we did what he said, we would be acknowledging God. Very, very sly, but it, it, it wasn't as if he tried to demand us to do that. But I could tell by how he was wording it, it was like an indoctrination program, so that in hopes that one day we would do that. I felt a, a feeling of being singled out for some reason. For some reason, he was just messing with me with the intent of trying to get me to do something wrong. Kind of an irritating type thing. And then we were taken into a, what appeared to be a, a big auditorium. And in this auditorium, um, there were men who were part of the group down in the front and they were individually talking and it, and it was like they were sharing their testimonies but when I would hear their testimonies they were doing everything except saying the name Jesus Christ they were like I used to think kind of like you guys think and now I found a better way and now I've just learned to serve God but when he said it I knew he was not talking about Jesus Christ. He was talking about serving Satan. I'm not sure who it was. I'm assuming that it was a military um, because of the uniforms that they had on. They knocked on our door and they asked for my husband's identification card. And at that moment, once they looked at his identification card, they removed me, my husband, and my son from our home. After the after we were removed from the home, I wasn't sure what happened with our son. I didn't see him anymore in the first dream. Um, he was separated from us, and I just remember me and my husband. We kept praying for the safety of our son because we wasn't sure what happened with him. Um, I remember one point of the dream. We looked up and I, we looked up and we saw like the clouds and the gates of heaven and it appeared as if they were opened. And then when I looked down, it was like fiery flames, which I'm assuming that was hell. <clears throat> um, I remember because we didn't know about our son, we didn't know if he was okay or not me and my husband in the dream we wanted to commit suicide we wanted to escape everything that we were going through and it was a lot that, that was going on in the dream um and we were hoping that we would still be able to enter heaven if we you know ended our lives um as you know if you commit suicide that's not something that you are supposed to do me and my husband in the dream we thought about that and as quickly as we thought about it, that moment passed because um, we just end up cho choosing the option to enduring until the end. When I walked out of the gas station and um, they were beheading people. And I, I knew I, I knew I was in a dream, so I wasn't scared. So the first thing I yelled was that I was a Christian and they grabbed me and put me on for me to have my head chopped off. So in this dream, you know, um, I was looking and I saw these three people, you know, they were on their knees, like hands folded, like they were in prayer, heads were bowed. And there was these three other people that were standing, but had like samurai swords and all of a sudden these th three people that were on their knees and praying right looked up to he heaven and they prayed and they were in very cheer a lot of cheer right and they were happy and there was ta i don't remember what they were saying but they were saying like i see the lord i see father our father right so all of a sudden these three people who had the samurai swords do this like ninja move, like a jump and a and a twirl of the uh, uh, in the back. It was really weird, but 
um, they do it and they then at the end they chop each each and one of them chop their heads off like one at a time so one did that crazy little weird move head chopped off and then the other one went and then the other one went and I said you know he who endures to the end shall be saved and that bothered them and um and you can tell because everybody got quiet and um they kind of like they just were really irritated by what I said then I said this is where ISIS is um and as he drove faster the uh, the car flipped over and started flipping and and um and the Lord revealed to me that when the car was driving faster that represented uh time coming faster that all this is coming uh, rapidly we were already among them but immediately after the car started to flip they um they pulled us out of the car the ISIS kids the teenagers they pulled us out of the car well anyway eventually they pulled us out of the car and one of the young teenage men we were in a room and he placed the machete on the side of my neck like right here and he told me to hold it so I was holding it it was on the side of my neck right here the Lord told me that this was synonymous to my cross Okay, and um, so it was my cross, but it was a machete, and I was putting it to the side of my neck, and um, he was trying to adjust it, and like, no, here, no, here, do it right here. It, at the same time, he was comforting me, and he was being gentle in his tone and speech, even though he wanted me to do it right here, as if he was like trying to help me and catapult me to go to heaven. Uh, in a, in, a, in a beneficial way as if he was benefiting me and he said don't worry Jesus will save you because I was scared and I was nervous and he said you know let's just do it different and he placed my head on the ground and I laid my head on the ground and then he, 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 um, he placed the machete on my head and as I was laying there um, I was hearing people crying and sobbing and, and then I also noticed that he killed another young boy and um, he chopped his head off okay and um, he applied the pressure to my neck and before you know it I was just my spirit was out of my body and I was looking and I was like like what happened you know what I mean I'm like looking like like, like what happened and um, as I was looking I didn't feel I realized that I didn't feel any pain I realized that no pain came upon my body you understand and immediately the scripture came to mind immediately Oh, death, where's your sting? We were being led into a school gymnasium, and we didn't know why. And we were being called in by number. And we got in there, we saw a guillotine. And I was waiting in line um, to be persecuted, and the guy in front of me um, laid down on the guillotine, like, on his back, which is really strange, but he was, like, looking up, and he seemed really um, okay with it, I guess. You know, he he seemed prepared for it and um, not all that afraid. In this dream, I was about to refuse the mark of the beast for the final time. And the Antichrist was alive and he was well and he was soaring to newer heights in his attempts to get Christians to deny their identity in Christ. So I had the guillotine right before me. I bravely stood before my executioner and I was decapitated. Now, as I stood up in front of the guillotine, my life was gone in a flash. I did not see the blade, not in this dream, nor do I recall anything except the immediate moment after my death. I was set free from my flesh, friends, like a bird in flight. I was soaring above the scene of my earthly departure, and I was waiting expectantly for my spouse. Um, I had a dream that the believers were going to be beheaded by the guillotine, and there was a lot of, um, kind of, there was some fear among the believers. But God gave me, in my dream, two scriptures. It was really nice. I felt I felt hope in the dream. Lately, um, the afflictions and the fiery trials, um, they've been 
you know, going on for a long time. But in my dream, it was just, it was amazing. I was thinking about like a new heaven and a new earth in my dream. And it's, it's not like this world, not anything like this world. You know, it's not going to be like anything like this world. And the wicked will be gone. And there's not going to be any more tears, no more sorrow, no more death. It's going to be amazing. And we'll be with our Father. It'll be wonderful. Um, we finally got to our destination. I remember singing on the train. I got everybody to start singing. And we were singing louder and louder and louder. And it was making the people guarding us oh, really upset. And he looked at me and I told him, I said, I'm not afraid of you. I have Jesus, I'm not afraid of you. And as he looked at me, I, and I kept telling him, you're gonna have to shoot me. Anyway, he pulled the, the gun out of his jacket as he was laughing, and he put it to my temple. And I still wasn't afraid. And I started singing. And I started, I started yelling the name Jesus. Jesus, and I, I was singing, but I was yelling, Jesus, Jesus, and I can remember him pulling the trigger, and he shot me right in my temple, and I can still remember <clears throat> saying, Jesus, Jesus, and he kept pulling the trigger over and over, and so he was shooting me, I don't know how many times, but anyway, <clears throat> it was making him mad <clears throat> that I kept screaming joyfully the name of Jesus as he was shooting me. And as he unloaded his whole gun in my head, I felt my spirit I felt my spirit leave. And as it left, I felt weightless. <laughs> and as I, as my spirit kept going up, I was so happy. I was so happy. And <laughs> there were streets of gold. <laughs> and the colors, the trees. <laughs> the grass it was so real it was so real <laughs> and it, I was I was flying over the trees and stuff and there were so many different colors I, I couldn't ex describe them all <laughs> they're pl pinks and blues and greens and yellows and it was so beautiful I slowly descended into heaven there where everybody was at. And everybody was going about. They all were just going about, you know, enjoying eternity, <laughs> visiting and whatnot. But everybody was out and about enjoying themselves. And my first thing I did was I was like, Mama, Mom. I seen her visiting. And she heard me and she turned around. <laughs> And she seen me <laughs> and we both ran into each other's arms <sighs> what a joy it's gonna be it was so so real